Someone once said, and I can't remember who it is, the greatest desire of love is simply to be in the presence of the one you love. In the past few months, I understand this truth better. Since my father's death in May, it's become very clear to me that my mother's only desire right now is to be in the presence of the man she has loved and lost. St. John, in his Gospel, tells us that God loved the world so much that he sent his Son into our world to be with us. And he gave him the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus so loved his mother Mary that before he died, he gave her to us to be with us as our mother. And then in time, he called her to be with him in heaven. One of our Redemptorist priests, Father Frank Mulvaney, recently told a wonderful childhood memory in his homily on the Feast of the Assumption. Father Frank is from Brooklyn, New York, or he works in Brooklyn. And he said that one of the things his mother loved to do was to take he and his brothers and sisters to the big Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. As every child knows, the highlight of the parade is the end. The very last float has Santa Claus, and his presence on that float signaled for them the official beginning of the Christmas season. Being only six years old and small of stature, Father Frank, like Zacchaeus in the Gospel, had to weave his way through the crowds in order to reach the curbside so he could get a good look at Santa. Now, what made this even more exciting is that when Santa came by, he would throw candy out into the crowd. As Santa passed by, Father Frank, along with many other screaming kids, ran after him down the street and the avenue. And as the excitement died down and the street started to empty, he turned and he looked for his mom and his sister, and he couldn't find them. He called out for his mother. There was no answer. He suddenly felt afraid and lonely and lost in this huge crowd of people, feeling like a total stranger among strangers. No one knew him. He couldn't feel the presence of anyone. But the instant his eyes came to rest on his mother in the crowd, he was so relieved. He saw her before she even saw him. In other words, he felt her presence even before he put his arms around her. His fear was replaced by comfort and joy. She didn't have to say or do anything. It was just being in her presence that he knew he was safe. Before John the Baptist, Jesus' herald, ever sees Jesus perform a miracle, before he ever hears him preach a word or forgive a sinner, or heal a man born blind. It is his presence in the womb of his mother Mary that causes him to leap for joy in the womb of his mother Elizabeth. Before Father Frank's mother took him into her arms that day at the Macy's Day Parade and told him how much she loved him, it was her presence and in her presence that he knew that he was saved and loved. Mary's role as our mother, our refuge, our life, and our hope is first and foremost always to bring us into the presence of her son, the one who truly loves us. The church's saints witness to this simple truth. The closer we get to Mary, the closer she brings us to Jesus. In the divine plan of salvation, Mary's glorious calling was to give Jesus to the world. It was Mary who made Christ available to us. The great paintings and icons of the Madonna, like our mother of perpetual help, show her presenting Jesus to the world. Mary doesn't draw attention to herself, but to her son. So I believe that anyone who has had their prayers answered by Mary's intercession find themselves more intimately connected to Christ, especially 
his presence in the Eucharist. If you're seeking a personal relationship with Jesus, I suggest you have a better chance of achieving this by asking Mary to be the one who links you to him. Authentic love for Mary already always generates enthusiastic love for Jesus. Every morning when I get up, I turn to Mary, but I quietly pray the Hail Mary. I greet her like Gabriel and Elizabeth, and then I ask her, like all sinners, to help me. And I greet her again and again, and after each greeting, I ask her for help at this very moment. And at some point, now it varies each day according to the condition of my spirit, the help comes. It's not a burst of energy or profound insight or revelation. It's as quiet as the wind. It's, it's a presence. And I know it's Jesus, the one who loves me. And that's all I need to live my day. And I thank her.